Kia ora koutou katoa, na mahi nui, kia koutou. Um, and hello to everyone at the Trades Union Congress in Brighton. It's a real pleasure for me to be able to join you via video all the way um, over here in New Zealand and take part virtually at least in uh, your Congress this year. Um, I just wanted to say from the outset, um, some of you may or may not know, I am uh, absolutely familiar with the TUC and the work that um, you do, uh, in part because I spent some time, uh, two and a half years living and working in the United Kingdom. In fact, uh, actually, little known fact, little story at the beginning, I uh, was a civil servant in the UK, but actually um, at, um, at some point decided that maybe I'd like to try and do something different. And so I actually applied for a job to come and work with you uh, um, as uh, a woman's officer. Um, obviously didn't quite succeed at getting that job. So I just have to say, you know, you maintain a very high bar and I absolutely endorse that. You'd, I didn't make the cut for you, but I eventually found a, a job in New Zealand. So <laughs> no hard feelings there, but I enjoyed very much getting to know more of the work that you do and the role that you play in the UK and uh, just wanted to acknowledge, to acknowledge that um, and that little known fact. I understand uh, one of the things that you'll be focusing on during your discussions this week is far-right rhetoric, uh, including racism and xenophobia. And it's something that sadly uh, we have experienced right here in New Zealand in recent times. Now, many of you will have heard about the horrific, horrifying terrorist attack that happened in Christchurch on March the 15th of this year, uh, and that a white supremacist extremist and uh, his views motivated uh, a gunman to kill 51 men, women and children. Now, what happened in Christchurch uh, is one of the most extreme examples of how these views and attitudes are impacting our communities but their influence can be seen in all aspects of society, and very few are immune. Now, one area we can see this clearly reflected is, sadly, in politics. Now, we are now operating in a world of fake news, you know, fragmented interest groups, and multiple sources of information that people increasingly distrust. It's an environment that, sadly, is ripe for shock politics where only the noisy or the surprising are heard. And the result uh, of this around the world is that democratic values and institutions are under threat in a way that many of us never expected to see in our lifetimes. Nationalist sentiment that closes off the possibility of countries working together is, is surging. Authoritarian movements and regimes are on the rise and norms that we take for granted in, in the West, the rule of law, the peaceful transfer of power, freedom of expression, are all being challenged in new and more explicit ways. Fear and blame are ultimately, though, easy political outs. But it won't surprise you to know I don't believe that they are the answer. I am optimistic, and I do believe that if we want to make sure that we are a safe, inclusive society and world, we have to look beyond our boundaries and we have to work together. Now, this is uh, one example for the rationale behind something we've called the Christchurch Call. Now, the Christchurch Call is an action plan that's being led by New Zealand and France that seeks to eliminate terrorist and violent extremist content online to stop the internet being used as a tool for terrorists. It commits governments and tech companies to a range of measures to achieve this, from developing uh, uh, plans to prevent the upload of violent extremist content to countering the roots of extremism. Now, several countries, including the UK, have signed on to do their bit, and I thank them for that. That's the work that's going on at a global scale. But at a community level, there's a lot we can do to help make our society a safer and more welcoming place for everyone. Now, of course, we're very mindful of the work we need to do because obviously we are not immune, but we at the same time are a nation with over 160 different ethnicities, more than 200 languages. So the work that we're doing, we know, can range from individual action, like calling out racism in our workplaces, to collective community action, such as working across industries to implement systematic change, or simply continuing the conversation, like you're doing at your Congress. Despite the global challenges we're facing, I am hopeful about the future. 
there is a lot to be excited about. There's leadership that can give us hope around the world. And from the good work that is happening at grassroots level in communities as well, to those discussions that are being had about collective responses to global challenges like climate change, it demonstrates that there is room for us to collaborate, work together and create long-term change. Now, I look forward to hearing more, though, about the ideas and suggestions that you come up with this week, including how we can keep working together on violent extremism, inequality, and, for instance, the future of work. I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in Brighton, and I wish you all the best uh, with your work um, going forward. And again, <laughs> it's always been wonderful to, to have a little bit to do with the TUC in the past, and I wish you all the very best in the future, and definitely no hard feelings. Who knows? If I got that job, maybe I wouldn't have come home. <laughs> no data. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā tātou katoa.